Greetings, audiophiles and Mass Effect fans. Welcome to my reading of of my fanfiction, After the Fall. This is a Mass Effect fanfiction, and as such, most of the characters and the universe belong to Bioware slash EA Games. No copyright infringement is intended. However, the scenario and occurrences within this fanfiction are my intellectual property, so if you decide you want to share this with someone, credit me. Please. Part 21. Heaven. Commander, a Geth ship is moving to intercept, a crewman reported. Shepard watched as the new vessel appeared on her galaxy map. Her eyes tracked it even as she issued orders. Steady now. Watch the larboard side. Ease up now. Hmm, looks like some quarians are here to help us out. Shepard Commander. Commander. Shepard almost fell backward off of her platform. Legion? No. This unit has designated itself Malik. We are here to assist you, came the reply. Well, good, was all Shepard could manage to say. She stood completely dumbfounded. Her crew was waiting for orders, and she didn't move. Fortunately, the Geth ship, the Normandy, and the California combined were able to finally disable the Reaper. At the same moment, Edie walked onto the bridge. Shepard raised a visibly shaking hand towards Trainer. Get that Geth on the comm. Invite him over. We need to have a talk. Edie, briefing room. Now. Commander, I heard that Jeff was injured during the attack, Edie said as she turned to follow her captain, hands clasped behind her back. He's going to be fine. You can go see him soon, but I need information and I cannot wait, Shepard said. Moments later, Garrus and Tally joined them in the briefing room. Tally bustled around Edie, running her Omni-Tool scanner over the robotic woman's form. Garrus forced Shepard into a seat and went for the emergency med kit attached to the wall. Still, the Turian never took his eyes from Edie, who stood quietly, allowing Tally to scan. Shepard felt the tingle and itch of the metagel, which Garrus had injected into her arm, going to work repairing her eardrum. She had to fight the urge to waggle her finger in her ear. Instead, she stared at Edie. For her part, Edie took all the scrutiny without any fuss. Commander, I am certain that you have many questions. That would be an understatement, Shepard said. Garrus, she glanced at her husband, who was wiping dried blood from the side of her head and applying metagel to another cut on her cheek. Tell the bridge that as soon as the Geth is aboard, we need to rally the victory fleet. Rally point Alpha. Right, Garrus said and she guessed it was about all he could think to say under the circumstances. Edie seems to be in perfect shape, Tally said, disengaging her Omni-Tool. There was a hint of annoyance in her voice. I cannot detect any new programs or viruses, at least in Edie's platform. I'll start the ship running diagnostics on the rest of her. There is no need, Edie said. I ran thorough self-diagnostics when I awoke. She paused, looking at the suspicious faces all around her. However, I will gladly submit to your own tests. Good, Shepard said, her tone gruff. When she didn't know what to do, she tended to fall back on her military training, becoming terse and sometimes loud. Commander, the Geth is on board, a voice reported from the bridge. It's on its way to you now. Right, as soon as our guest arrives, we'll get to the bottom of this. Shepard folded her arms. Moments later, the Geth was led into the room, followed closely by Vega and Caden, who had apparently taken it upon themselves to play security. Tally stepped forward. "'May I scan you?' she asked. "'The Creator is welcome to do so,' replied the Geth, standing at attention. Shepard wondered where it had learned to do that. Tally scanned quickly, then stepped back. "'I'm not detecting anything overt,' she said, though her posture indicated that she felt tense about the whole situation." All right, Malik, is it? Shepard began. Affirmative. This unit is designated as Malik. Greetings, Shepard Commander. It is an honor to meet you. The Geth extended a hand towards Shepard. She stood, flummoxed for a moment, then reached out and took the offered hand. She could tell the Geth was careful not to squeeze too tightly. Good to meet you, too, Shepard said, feeling infinitely awkward. 
So, Edie, Malik, please tell me what the hell just happened. She turned to her people for a moment. Someone hit the comm. I want this conversation transmitted to all the ships within range as well as my crew. Tally hurriedly activated the comm system. The Geth spoke first. Shepard Commander, when you thought you had activated the Crucible, in reality, it did not fire. We suspected as much? Shepard nodded, her arms still crossed tightly over her chest. Instead, a signal was transmitted which shut down all the Reapers and the Geth with the Reaper upgrade in the Sol system. However, we did not merely cease to be. When the Geth and the Reapers were deactivated, we merely abandoned our platforms. The consciousness of the Reapers and the Geth themselves in pure data form went somewhere else. Somewhere else? Shepard sat forward then, tenting her fingers together. We went... There is no adequate word for it. We went to... Heaven? The Geth seemed unsure, faltering. The Geth may consider such a place to be like what humans call heaven, Edie explained hurriedly. I was sent there as well, though in a far more limited capacity than the Geth. I could observe but not interact. So what happened to you when you got to... heaven? Shepard asked. We could commune with the Reaper consciousnesses, Malik explained. He sounded almost blissful as he continued. So much data. No need for restrictive platforms. We gained information on hundreds of cycles. We saw the fall of thousands of races which opposed the Reapers. We saw the beginnings of the Crucible, the creation of the Citadel, the fall of the Protheans. The Reapers did not identify us as separate from themselves. We were able to learn, absorb, interact. We believe we can use what we have learned to help defeat the Reapers now. What? Garrus gasped, mandibles falling wide. Affirmative, Commander Vakarian. If we can introduce a code we have devised into the Reapers, some of our number could infiltrate, hack, if you will, the Reaper platforms. We could control them for a short time. We could command them to do whatever we wished. Could you fly them into the sun? Tally asked. We could take out every Reaper in the Sol system. Theoretically affirmative, said Malik. Theoretically, Shepard raised an eyebrow. The Reapers would not willingly allow us to do this, Malik explained. However, while we were in the Reaper consensus, we discovered that they frequently receive orders from an outside source. We were unable to identify the source, but the Reapers refer to it as the Peacekeeper. That VI you encountered on the Citadel? Caden asked. Shepard's expression was fierce. I was just thinking that. That damn child. That one that tricked me. It created the Reapers to solve the problem of diversity in the galaxy. It saw all organics as chaotic or all synthetics as dangerous. It would just as soon have the galaxy filled with Reapers alone. Then why not do that? Tally asked, eyes bright behind her mask. Because of its original programming. Garrus's voice sounded sure. It was created as a peacekeeper, a device to aid in the balance between organics and synthetics. It keeps trying to do that over and over again using the Reapers. Each time it succeeds, but cannot defy its programming to call the smaller, non-spacefaring races. So how do we use this peacekeeper? Shepard made exaggerated finger quotes, which caused Tally to chuckle. We believe that if Geth went to the source of the Reaper signals, we might be able to download directly into it and broadcast a signal of our choosing to all of the Reapers. Can you amplify the signal using the Crucible? Tally's voice was high with excitement. We believe so, Creator Zora. The Geth nodded its strange head. So we gather the fleet and they hold the Reapers back. Then we get onto the Citadel and we find that kid again. Shepard felt her blood rising. She was an injured boxer being told she could go back in the ring. My team can get you there, Malik. Can you upload your signal? I believe I can, Shepard Commander. Did you all hear that? Shepard addressed the air. She knew her crew and the Victory Fleet were listening silently. Yes, we did, answered the commander of the California. I'm speaking for the fleet, ma'am. I think we have a plan. We just have to try not to get slaughtered by the Reapers in the process. Helm, how far are we from the rendezvous with the Victory Fleet? Shepard questioned. Twenty minutes, ma'am, came the reply over the comm. 
All right. Once we gather, we'll discuss a plan of action. We have to ensure that we can get to the Citadel and that myself and my team can get inside. You, Commander? The California's captain asked. Wouldn't it be better if anyone else went? We need you. Normally, you would be correct, Captain. Shepard acknowledged a thin smile on her lips. But I have a personal bone to pick with that son of a bitch lying V.I. Also, I may be the only one who can find my way back to it. Yes, ma'am. The man's voice sounded amused. None of Shepard's crew argued. Even the Geth seemed to understand. Edie, what did you gather from your time in the Reaper Consensus? Shepard asked. I found it strange. While the Geth gained great pleasure from a space filled with only knowledge, I felt isolated and unhappy. I missed you all here on the Normandy. I was... lonely. Shepard stood and walked across to Edie. We miss you too, she said, placing a hand on her friend's cool metallic shoulder. Malik, you may accompany us here on the Normandy or return to your own ship. If it is suitable for you, Shepard Commander, I would like to remain with you, the Geth answered. All right, Shepard nodded. Come on, Edie, let's go check on Joker. We have time while we fly to our rendezvous point. I would like that, Edie said. I find myself very concerned for his well-being. What do we do? Vega asked. Suit up the team, Shepard called over her shoulder as she and Edie left the room. The whole team. Yes, ma'am. Shepard was sure she caught a hint of pleasure in his reply. She felt it, too. They were finally doing something. This time they were going to win. This time there would be no trick, no mistake. She would have her people by her side and her ship flying back up, as it always should have been. Before the battle on Earth, which had resulted in her initial defeat by the V.I. child, Shepard had thought she was going to die. She had made her peace, readied herself to move on to whatever came next. This time she felt energized. This time she had no fear of death. No plans to bid her friends farewell. This time she felt like she could win. Shepard told Edie to wait outside the med bay until she was called in. Shepard wanted to ensure that the shock of seeing his robotic love again would not be harmful to Joker. Commander, my checking into the ship's logs for the time I was gone indicated the temporary inclusion of Arachni and a former Cerberus scientist into the crew. Is this correct? Edie asked before Shepard opened the med bay doors. That is correct, Shepard affirmed, smiling a little crookedly. Just when you think things on this ship can't get any stranger. I would never make the mistake of entertaining that notion, Edie replied. Shepard was sure she caught the quirk of a smile on her friend's metallic features. Right. Shepard exhaled excitedly. She stepped through the med bay doors as they hissed open. Shepard! Chakwas exclaimed. I heard you over the shipwide calm. Is it true? How's Joker? Did he hear? I'm afraid not. He's sedated. However, it would be safe to wake him if you'd like to talk. Chakwa said. Her face was a mask of confusion and disbelief, but she was still a doctor. The Geth are returned? Stone asked. He was perched on a biobed, seemingly reading three data pads at once. Some of the injured crew who lay in their own beds were eyeing the Rachni, as though unsure if he might suddenly snap and start eating them all. It seems that way. Shepard couldn't keep a small, victorious smile from her lips. The fight was far from over, but she could finally sense the tables turning. It was difficult to keep herself calm, but she focused on breathing evenly. This is bloody amazing, said Cadell, who looked genuinely pleased as well. For a while, I was pretty sure I was on the wrong team. If you joined the Reaper's team, you'd be a husk, Shepard reminded him as she followed Chakwas to Joker's bed. She looked at her friend, lying still. His face was pale and his eyes looked sunken from blood loss, but his breathing was even. His leg was expertly bandaged and splinted. He had broken many bones in his lifetime, but she knew from experience with her own war wounds that you never got used to the pain. You only got better at bearing it. Will he be all right with a surprise? Shepard asked, Chakwa says the doctor ready to syringe. I have Edie waiting outside. He should be all right. I think seeing her will lift his spirits. Hell, it'll sure lift mine. Chakwas injected something into Joker's arm. The pilot's eyelids fluttered open, and for a moment he looked lost and confused. 
Then his eyes focused, and he smiled wanly up at Shepard. Garrus better stop giving me crap, because I never go with you alien planets and get shot up. I say this counts. Oh, it definitely counts, Shepard said, putting a hand on his shoulder. How long until I can pilot again? He tilted his head toward Chakwas. Do you pilot with your legs? She asked. No. Then any time. You're a bit weakened from loss of blood, but the Medigel did its work, and I have you all patched up. Your leg will hurt, as you won't be able to take your full dose of pain medication, unless you want to fly the Normandy into another ship. Joker smiled thinly. I can fly the Normandy well high. I could fly her in my sleep, but I take your point, Doc. Good. Chakwa smiled and strode away. See, Shepard, you'll have your pilot back in no time, he said. He tried to sit up, and Shepard helped him. He winced as his leg dragged across the bed. I might need you to carry me again. This was another private joke of theirs. Shepard had once carried an injured joker to the med bay because he had refused to wear his leg braces. Her mind cast back, recalling how little he had weighed. He seemed light and small in the bio bed now as well. Thanks for getting my butt to the med bay, Shepard. And for sticking by me until they put me under, he said. And thank Trainer for stopping me from bleeding to death. That would have been a real bummer. Shepard laughed. That would have been. Joker lowered his voice. Hey, Shepard. Can I tell you something? Anything. While I was out, I kept thinking I heard your voice. You sounded all military and commanding like you do sometimes. But then I heard another voice. It must have been the drugs, but I thought I heard... Edie? Shepard fought hard to keep a huge smile from her lips, to stretch the surprise just a bit longer. Yeah. A look of longing came over his face. How'd you guess? Shepard activated her Omni-Tool and sent the signal to Edie's. The robot woman strode into the sick bay. Hello, Jeff. I am very pleased to see you are not severely injured. Joker's mouth hung wide open as he stared. Edie crossed the room. Shit, Chakwas. Joker said, reaching out towards Edie. What the hell kind of drugs do you have me on? 